Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners. My name is Miss Cohen, and this is Murmur's identification review. The purpose of this one sheet here that I have in front of you is for you to be able to identify for the boards where you would best hear a murmur. It is very likely that you will get a question like this on the boards, on the nurse practitioner boards. For that reason, I have created this cheat sheet with the purposes of teaching you how to recognize or identify the location of a murmur, in addition to other information you should know about murmurs. But why don't we go ahead and go over um, what I have here in front of you, and then I'm going to guide you on how to get access to a printable um, version of this sheet for your study purposes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So murmurs, very common that you'll get a question. The boards can ask you, for example, where would you best hear, and then they'll give you the name of a murmur, say mitral valve prolapse, right? So check out this picture I have of this gentleman. So let me tell you a little story about this guy. This guy, um, his name is Peyton Manning. So first of all, he is a very famous football player, which I recently found out because I don't watch sports and I had no idea who he was. I mean, you can call him, um, you can call him Peter Mitchell for all I care, but for People who know who Peyton Manning, let's just use that name as you'll recognize it much easier. So Peyton Manning being a football player, he is what it's known as the most valuable player. Most valuable, that's what they call here MVP. Another thing I didn't know is like a sports slang, but hey, now I know what it means. So Peyton Manning, this gentleman, is known as one of the most valuable players, MVPs, okay? And guess where he lives? He lives in apartment M. Just stick with me, just follow the story. So let's go over apartment M. As you can see, I have divided here A, P, T, M. This is for apartment M. And each letter stands for the location of a murmur, say aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. Okay, apartment M. So when you're taking the boards, this is very good dump information. They'll give you a white sheet of paper or a white board where you can just dump information before you begin the test. And this is a good diagram to, to dump in that sheet. So aortic, when you take the boards, you have to recognize which side the murmur is best heard on. And remember that patients are a mirror image. So our right is their left and our left is their right. So this side right here would be the right side. So if it helps you, feel free to print this sheet and write the little R here on the top. You'll be surprised how many students get this wrong. Something as simple as recognizing which side is which. So make it easier for you and just do the R here up top for right side. And over here, this is left side. Now, the other thing you should be mindful of is the intercostal space or the rib space, right? So all we really care about is the second intercostal space and the fifth intercostal space. So back to the aortic area, it's located on the left, excuse me, right side. Look, I even got it wrong. Right side second intercostal space because it's up top, okay? The pulmonic, it's on the opposite side. So this will be the left side, second intercostal space because it's up top. Then you have the tricuspid, which you shouldn't really pay much attention to. So let's go straight to what's important, the mitral area. The mitral area is located on the left side. Yes, left side fifth, because it's in the bottom, right? Fifth intercostal space, okay? So again, this is your right side, second intercostal space, left side, second intercostal space, left side, fifth intercostal space. So having said that, when they give you the name of a murmur, 
pay most attention to the first name of the murmur, not so much the last name. What I mean by that is if they say, for example, mitral regurge, okay? Mitral being the first name, regurge being the last name, uh, regurge doesn't matter. Mitral does matter because that tells you the location. So where would you best hear mitral regurge? Mitral will be best heard on the left side, fifth intercostal space. Where would you best hear aortic stenosis? Well, aortic being the first name, stenosis, nobody cares. So aortic stenosis will be best heard in the aortic region, which would be the right side, second intercostal space. Where would you best hear mitral valve prolapse? First name, mitral. Mitral valve prolapse. This would be on the left side, fifth intercostal space. And like that, you can apply all the murmurs. So you're very welcome. That's how you find out where you would best hear a murmur. Now, there's more information you should know about the murmurs. And before I continue, uh, this is my website up here where you can get access to the printable version of this sheet in addition to other free resources, coinreview.teachable.com. Now, pay attention to this side over here. So again, back to Mr. Peyton Manning. I told you Mr. Peyton Manning was an MVP. So remember this sentence, Mr. Peyton Manning as MVP. These are your systolic murmurs. What do I mean by that? Mr. MR stands for mitral regurg. Peyton Manning, or again, you can call it Peter Mitchell for all I care. This is what we are gonna call your physiologic murmur, the okay murmur, okay? AS stands for aortic stenosis. MVP will stand for mitral valve prolapse. Now, all of these murmurs, which by the way, are in green, are your systolic murmurs. Mr. Peyton Manning as MVP is your systolic murmur. So if you remember that sentence, you'll remember these are your systolic murmurs. Now, why are they green? Because consider these murmurs to be okay, all right? Not life-threatening, unlike the ones down here. Now, Mr. Peyton Manning has very strong arms, very strong arms because he's a football player and he's so good, his arms are huge. So arms for AR, aortic regurg, MS, mitral stenosis. And these are in red because his arms are dangerously strong. And in other words, these are your dangerous murmurs known as your diastolics. Another way to remember diastolic murmurs is that you die. Diastolic, you die. Okay, think of it that way, if it helps you remember. So what have we learned so far? How to locate a murmur or where you would best hear a murmur? And if is a systolic murmur versus a diastolic. So if I ask you, aortic regurge, is this a systolic or diastolic? Aortic regurge, AR. AR is part of arms, therefore is a diastolic. What about um, aortic stenosis? Aortic stenosis, AS. AS falls under this sentence, Mr. Painted Manning as MVP, it's a systolic murmur. And that's how you know which murmur is which, if it's systolic versus diastolic, if it's okay or if it's dangerous, all right? I hope this helps you guys. So Mr. Peyton Manning as MVP has strong arms. Now there's other things that you should know about murmurs. So let's pay attention to uh, down here. And actually before I go there, I forgot to mention one thing. You see that we have S1, S2, S3, and S4. These are your heart sounds. Now, S1, S3, and S4, you would hear down in the mitral area. S2 is the only one that you hear up top in the pulmonic area. So where would you hear S2? S2 would, would be best heard on the left side, second intercostal space. So part of your diagram right here. Okay, let's go down here. A couple more things. So remember now that regurge means harsh sound. Anything that is regurge will have a harsh sound. Stenosis will be soft. Look at the S and the S. 
stenosis sound will be soft, okay? Whenever you see fixed split, I want you to associate that with septal defect. A fixed split with septal defect. An S split, know that it's normal during inspiration only. S split, normal during inspiration only. And an S2 sound, normal only during inspiration, okay? So inspiration, um, it's the only thing that makes it okay. Um, expiration will not be okay. Know that only systolic murmurs will radiate. Now, which ones radiate? Well, if it's by the neck, like aortic stenosis, it will radiate to the neck. And if we have the mitral down here, these are the ones that radiate to the armpit, all right? So a systolic that would radiate would be any one of these, like a, like a mitral valve prolapse or mitral regurg, mitral regurg, yeah? Mitral regurg will, will radiate to the armpit. Again, look at the location. Associate a mid-systolic click with MVP. Mid-systolic click with MVP. And know who is affected by S3 and S4 sound. So I teach my students that S3, if you look at the number three sideways, it almost looks like a pregnant lady, right? Like the breast and the belly. So it's common in fluid overload, such as in pregnancy and also CHF. So again, the number three also kind of looks chunky. So think of it that way, fluid overload or pregnancy. S4. S4, I think of number four being the oldest of all the sounds. So you have S1, S2, S3, S4. S4 is the oldest, therefore it is very common in the elderly. It's a benign sound in the elderly and it's usually due to atherosclerotic um, vessels, okay? Just because of age, all right? So um, ladies and gentlemen, this is your murmurs. I have taught you, number one, where you would best hear a murmur, remember to identify your right side versus your left. We discussed your systolic versus your diastolic murmurs. And I gave you some additional information that you would benefit from knowing when it comes to the murmurs. Now, let me show you where you would go to teach, um, to print this sheet. Now, down here, I left an area for my notes so you can write additional notes for, your, for yourself. So go to the Cohen Review and uh, let me just show you because I have you pulled up for you here. When you go to um, this website, cohenreview.teachable.com, which is where I have all of my uh, lectures that I do, you'll come into this page and you'll see that I offer two services. One is the actual lectures where you will get the printable version that I told you about of the murmurs. And I also do a virtual coaching. And what that is, is that I meet with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And we assess your readiness to take the boards because some students don't know if they're studying right, if they're studying well, if they're studying enough, if they're focusing on the right stuff. So we go over some topics that are heavily questioned on the boards and I guide you as to how ready you are. And if, you're, and if you need more studying, we talk about a study plan that is personal to you. But let's go back to the lecture. So I'm going to click here. And if you go down here, it shows you the active curriculum, which by the way, I'm constantly updating according to the changes in the guidelines, which are happening, such as with um, asthma, right? Now they're using the GINA and um, uh, the blood pressure guidelines. But anyways, these are the lectures that I have. You're welcome to check out the ones that say preview for free. So if you click on murmurs, you will have access to this video. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that you'll find the PDF access there. So you can click on that and you can print this sheet for your records. All right, guys. Well, this was the Murmurs uh, lecture. I welcome you to check my other free videos on YouTube um, and also on my page at the Cohen Review. And feel free to follow me on either Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Instagram is cohen.review and Facebook it's called Cohen Review uh, NP Study Group which uh, I always post additional content that will help you uh, to pass the boards additional study tips and um, and and
topics and questions and everything that relates to uh, passing the NP boards. So best of luck with your studies. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at shiracohen at gmail.com. Take care, guys.